Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to talk about Dell PowerEdge R930 and specifically we're going to go over the memory and CPUs inside. Let's get rolling. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the Dell PowerEdge R930 server. Do us a favor, if you find anything in this video useful, click that like and smash that subscribe. All right, well, let's get rolling. First things first, this is a 4U rack mount chassis. Um, there are, uh, really, there's only one chassis type. It's a 24 bay small form factor is what this is here. So you can load it up with a, a ton of um, uh, 2.5 inch hard drives or SSDs if you would like. Uh, as far as the, uh, the CPUs are concerned, there are four CPUs inside. It's an LGA 2011 socket. It takes Intel Xeon E7 4800 V3 or V4 series processors, and it also takes Intel Xeon E7 8800 series V3 or V4 series processors. As far as the RAM is concerned, it takes DDR4 memory. There are 96 DIMM slots inside this machine. Yes, you heard that right. There are 96 DIMM slots inside this. And the way that you can get there, and we'll open it up and show you that in a minute, is there are eight memory risers, and when you pull the risers out, there are 12 DIMM slots on the riser, so that basically each CPU is controlling two of the risers, okay? Um, as far as the different speeds, that you can use. You can use uh, 2133, 2400, or all the way up to 2666. I will note though, if you put in 2666, it's actually going to clock down to 2400, which is the true fastest speed for the R930. So if you just have some 2666 laying around, sure you can throw it in. If you're just buying now, I recommend just grabbing the 2400. There's no point in spending extra money on the 2666, okay? As far as the different sizes, you can use a 4 gig, an 8 gig, a 16 gig, a 32 gig, a 64 gig, or all all the way up to 128 gig. I will note though, for the uh, 64 gig and the 128 gig, you can only use that with one type of RAM. And that brings us to what type of RAM does my R930 support? Well, there's two types. You can use ECC registered, known as an RDIM, or you can use load reduced, known as an LRDIM. With ECC registered, you can max out at three terabytes using 96 32 gigs at 2400 speed. Whereas with load reduced, you can actually get four times the scalability. You can go all the way up to 12 terabytes of RAM. Yes, you heard that correct. 12 terabytes of RAM inside this machine using 9628 gigabytes at 2400 speed. So now that we know a little bit more about the general specs for the RAM and the CPUs, let's go ahead and open it up. I'll show you the, uh, how to take the risers out, uh, how to uh, install the RAM and the risers. If you're not fully maxing out and putting in 96 modules, let's say you're putting in 48 or 24 or something like this, how would you properly install it to get the overall max performance? So we'll go through all that, uh, but I'm gonna grab my ESD gear and we'll be right back. All right, now that we have our ESD gear on, we're safe to open the machine. So pretty much like any uh, you know rack mount, especially Dell rack mount you've been in, you're just gonna lift this tab, just gonna pop the top off and you're just gonna toss it to the side, nice and easy. All right, so as we discussed, there are four CPUs, uh, which are back here, might be a little hard to see, but there's four CPUs under this. Uh, then you have all some really beefy uh, fans here to keep airflow going through the eight memory risers, which is what we're gonna focus on here. So the memory risers are labeled. So this is A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. So obviously if you were um, only, let's say you only had two CPUs in, uh, that would be the first, um, four risers here, so you wouldn't want to use the risers over here. Um, so if you're um, only running with two CPUs, which I would recommend running with four, but if, if that's the case, make sure you stick with these four risers, okay? So now the, the way that you're going to pop the riser out is this blue tab will actually slide forward. It's a release slide, and this will pop up, and you have a handle here, and you're going to pull the riser out, okay? So once the riser comes out, I'm going to set it right here just so that it's uh, hopefully nice and centered on screen for you. You're gonna lift this up, and you're gonna lift this up, and now you will have complete access to all the DIMM slots. So as we discussed, there are 12 DIMM slots for the memory riser, and there are eight memory risers, and that's how you get to 96. Within the riser, you will notice there are four memory channels, and each channel has three DIMM slots per channel. And the nice thing is they're color-coded and they're also labeled on the riser right here. So you will notice that this white slot right here is slot one. You come to the outside over here, and this white slot here is slot two. You come over here to this white slot is three, 
and this is slot 4. So you'll notice that the white slot is the start of the memory channel. This is then followed by the black slot is the second dim slot, so you're going to come right back to the original one, and this is 5. You're going to come to the outside via the 2, and this is going to be 6. This black one over here is 7, and this black one is 8. Then you're going to go 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay, so that's how you'd properly configure it. Now, of course, if you're loading them all up, you just load them all up. Um, it's more important if, let's just say, you were only going to put four modules in here, you'd want to put them in the four white slots. If you're going to put eight modules in this riser, you'd want to put them in the whites and the blacks, leaving all the greens empty. Okay, so now that we know uh, how to install it, uh, let's talk about a couple other just general tips. Okay, so I like to pop all my tabs open before I actually start my memory upgrade. Um, because I don't want anything fighting me and I want to make it nice and easy. My goal here is honestly to protect the parts and make sure everything is safe and the modules are safe and um, that when I put the machine back together, there are zero issues. That's the goal, right? And if it takes a couple extra minutes, hey, no biggie. All right. So now we're going to talk about something else that's important. Right here in the middle of this module, you'll see this uh, notch that's carved out in the leads. This notch is known as a key. What's important about this key is it's not perfectly centered. So you need to make sure you line your module up properly, okay? If you have it facing the wrong way, this is the wrong way, you'd want it like this, okay? If you have it facing the wrong way, you could potentially damage the lead or you could damage the, um, the dim slot itself, which means you might have to get a new memory um, riser or a new um, a new module. Neither of those are, are a problem you want to run into. So just again, take the extra second, line it up properly, all right, so we put it in, it's all lined up properly. Now you'll notice I'm not holding the module, the module is in, but it's actually not fully seated, so you need to make sure you hear these two clicks. So those two clicks let you know that the module is actually inserted. What's happened is the, uh, the tabs here have actually grabbed some notches on the side of the dims and pulled it in, and now the leads are fully inserted into the dim slot itself. Okay, and we're gonna, we're gonna do that again, and we're gonna come over here to number two. So we've done one and now we're doing two. We're just gonna pop this in. We'll come back and we'll do three. And we'll come back here and do four. So again, if you were only installing four modules into your riser, this would be the best way to do it to maximize your overall performance, okay? Now we're actually gonna completely load this up, so I'm gonna fast forward fill this up and be right back. All right, so now we have completely loaded this up. Uh, one of the things that I recommend, and it looks like we actually might have done it right here, is I always check the tabs to make sure they're not sticking out at all. So you see how that green one's kind of sticking out a little? It is not fully inserted. You hear that little click? So that's how you know, all right, here's two more. So it's partly because I'm doing it on here, I recommend actually not doing it on top of this and doing it on the actual desktop, but I was trying to make it look good for the camera. But So um, you just make sure all those tabs are fully closed because if they're not, that's again when I talk about uh, people will run into a seating issue where they think it's not seated and there's a bad dim and it's just simply just need to push it down a little bit more. So, all right, cool. So now that you see um, it's fully loaded, we're going to show you uh, how to put it all back in here. So you need to make sure you close these two um, black pieces here. You're going to lift this up, and you'll notice uh, right here, you're going to line up with these two carve-outs here on the plastic. And you're going to be nice and slow, just put it in nice and gingerly. So once you get it in, now you have to push this down, and this will click into place. Okay, and it's fully in. So we're going to go ahead and knock out the, uh, the next seven of them. We're going to put 96 modules in this. We're actually only putting in uh, 32 gigs right now, so we're only taking it up to 3 TBs. But again, you can actually go all the way up to 12 TBs. So uh, this is a great machine as far as if you're looking for um, you know, big data or AI or you know, a, a complicated corporate environment. I mean, this can manage so, so much that it's, um, it's a great solution. And if you're looking to actually build out an R930, we 
custom build R930 as we have plenty in stock. Would love to quote you some if this is something that you're using in your data center or if you're looking for upgrades for your R930, you, you want to put in some 32 gigs, 64 gigs, whatever the case may be. Would love to quote you. So email us at sales at cloudninjas.com. That's sales at cloudninjas.com and uh, would appreciate the opportunity to be able to, to earn your business. So, all right, now that we're done, we're just going to drop the top back on and call it a day. So appreciate you stopping by. Take care. Mm-hmm.